Welcome to Wood Gas Stove Science, where we try to figure out the science behind wood gas stoves. In this week's episode, um, I'm going to try to uh, answer some questions from some of my subscribers who've asked for smaller can stoves. Uh, so this week while I was in Walmart, I was looking around for a stainless steel can that I might use, and I noticed this Ozark Trails can cooler. Uh, so this cooler is made to put a can of beer or soda inside, and it's supposed to keep it cool. Um, I suppose it could also keep it warm if you wanted it to. So it's a vacuum um, insulated stainless steel cooler. Um, so here's a here's a picture of the finished stove. Uh, it's nice and compact. Um, this cooler is actually only about three inches in diameter and about um, four and three quarter inches long uh, when it's when it's fully built. Um, so I'm considering that a very small stove. Now with its small size, I was very surprised um, when I went to light it, I was actually able to put one full cup of uh, wood pellets in it. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit of the building of this. Um, I won't get too deep into the building of it, but I do want to show you how to pull one of these coolers apart because it's very similar to most other travel mugs um, and thermoses uh, that are vacuum um, insulated. So the first thing you'll want to do is pop off um, the bottom cover. Uh, you'll see that that bottom cover um, is just kind of finishes off the bottom of the cooler uh, and in the very bottom that cover is cover is um, hiding how they vacuum seal this. Now this is a fully welded um, two layer cooler uh, and that bottom cap is put on and they draw a vacuum on it and then they plug the bottom hole uh, with some clay like substance and that theoretically holds the vacuum in. Uh, so in order to um, open up any one of these travel mugs or in particular this type of cooler, um, it's really relatively easy. You take a uh, rasp file um, and you basically just file off the corner. Um, and after you've filed for a few minutes, you'll actually see a crack open up. Um, and that crack, uh, theoretically, um, will let the vacuum out. And then if there is actually any vacuum in it, which I've never actually seen any vacuum in these things. Um, but here you can see that the crack is opened up um, on the bottom of the can where I was filing. And then I just tapped it with the back of the file and you can actually see um, a pretty good crack open up. Uh, so you continue to file around the outside um, and eventually you'll um, see a crack all the way around and then you'll just be able to grab it and uh, peel it out. Uh, now I didn't file quite deep enough so I was actually pulling quite hard in this. I would suggest you not do this because uh, and if you do do this make sure you are wearing gloves uh, because this will be very very sharp. Um, but anyways once you get that off you'll be able to see the inner and the outer can. Uh, now the key here is um, what makes this um, cooler uh, such a good candidate for a stove is this actually about a quarter inch of air between the inner and the outer um, containers. Uh, and that, number one, makes it good for insulating purposes for hot and cold beverages, but number two, it makes it so the air can flow freely up the, between the two cans when we convert this to a can stove. Um, so now that you've got the bottom opened up, uh, the top is also can be opened up by using a file. So you'll just file the top lip and um, you will start to see a little seam um, where you're filing. And once you've opened up that seam, all you have to do is tap that inner can um, out. And in a second, uh, you'll see me do that. Um, and like I said, this is the same for all travel mugs um, or a lot of travel mugs that you find at Walmart, Target, um, you know, or other big box stores. Uh, the cost of this uh, can cooler at Walmart was um, $5.98. Um, I'm sure you'll find them in your local Walmart for somewhere in that range. Uh, so here you can see that I've separated the inner and the outer um, two containers. Uh, once I've done that, I go through and clean up all of the edges um, with the file uh, so they're not sharp. 
um, and then I will start um, putting the holes in. I'm not actually going to show you the uh, drilling of the holes. Um, I'm not done optimizing this stove, so I'll actually, um, if everybody wants me to, I can go back and actually do a full build video on this stove or this type of stove. Uh, but um, today I didn't uh, fully optimize uh, my can stove and I also was not able to do a final um, flame concentrator or pot stand uh, so I sort of use some of my old flame concentrators and pot stands from some of my other builds uh, to actually burn this um, so here you can see that the inner can and the outer can sort of slide together uh, they're still a little bit tight but um, that's kind of what you want so so um, it doesn't leak air uh, so the next thing you're going to see me doing is actually using a pair of pliers and putting a little lip around the top of the inner can so that way when you press the inner can down it actually stops in the correct spot. Um, so that will be important for being able to take this stove apart to clean it. Uh, now the wall thickness on these are uh, pretty substantial compared to a regular can. I would expect that once this can stove is working well that it will last for a long, long time. Uh, I have noticed that can stoves, regular tin can stoves, uh, can burn out, um, you know, after, um, you know, 25 or 30 burns if you do not um, clean them well and protect them because the ash that is left over from the burn uh, is a little bit on the acidic side so it can rust out your cans pretty quickly especially on the bottom of the can where you've drilled a whole bunch of holes in it um, but this probably won't happen with this stove because it is stainless steel um, so that'll be nice to have a stove that will last a long time um, and here you can see that after I put that lip on that it just sort of stops. Uh, now here's a picture of it burning. It's uh, actually burning very well. Um, it's not fully optimized and unfortunately the, the tightness between the inner and the outer can doesn't really allow me to use my vortex tweak. Um, so, oh, and, and still allow it to be taken apart. So here you can see um, a, a burn. It's very, very solid flame, um, but I'm also using a flame concentrator and a pot stand from another build, so it's not perfectly, it doesn't fit perfectly well, but that is a very, very concentrated solid flame. Uh, so here you can see the finished can stove. Um, it's really small and compact, um, and this cover that comes with it, I would um, I'm going to keep this cover and I'm not going to use it in any burns because there's a plastic thread on the inside But it does keep the stove really nice and tight together and doesn't rattle when it's in your pack Thank you very much for joining me with today's episode of wood gas stove science uh, Thank you again and goodbye